Hi, I'm Chef Julie Hardigan. Let's talk about that essential component to every kitchen, the ingredients that define the very character of so many dishes we prepare, no matter what type of cuisine. That's right, I'm talking about spices, from salt and pepper to the most exotic and rare examples from the furthest corners of the earth. Spices excite the senses and bring your favorite dishes to life. We'll be right back to look at some fresh ideas from one of America's top spice markets, and then I'll show you a fun way to use one of my favorite finds. Don't go away. Looking for a great way to keep your weekly shopping budget in check? Choose your favorite supermarket's store brands. You get the same quality as national brands and save at the cash register. Give store brands a try and add some money to your pocketbook. Welcome back. So today we're talking about spices. How far back do spices go? Egyptian records from 4,000 years ago show that juniper, cumin, and thyme were used to help digestion. While members of the Chinese emperor's court from the third century BC kept cloves in their mouth to have sweet smelling breath when addressing the emperor. Ancient Greeks even wore parsley and marjoram crowns during banquets, believing that it would prevent drunkenness. So spices as we know them go back to medieval Europe when pepper was used to hide the bad taste of meats that had gone rancid. In fact, at one time, black pepper was the most valuable spice in the world. So much so that in medieval Europe, it was not uncommon to use single peppercorns as accepted currency to pay taxes, tolls, and rent. A pound of saffron could buy you a horse, and a pound of nutmeg was worth seven fat oxen. Today, the average person has access to a way wider variety of spices than any emperor ever did in the past. And there is no better place to see and taste all the possibilities than a little spice market here in New York named Calustian's. It offers 10,000 international ingredients and products, but today, we're here to focus on the individual spices as well as exotic spice blends you may have never heard of. Here are a few of my favorites. Smoked paprika, ras al hanout, za'atar, Duca, Aleppo pepper, pink peppercorns, you guys, I could go on. So let's go to the spice market and learn about the amazing selection of spices that have made their way here from all around the globe. Hi, so we're here at Calustian's. I am so excited to share one of my favorite places in the world with all of you. And even better, we're going to talk to owner Aziz Osmani right now to learn even more about the store. What are some like great starter spices that you think that everybody should have at home? Like what would be if somebody new came in here who is like just getting into cooking and said, what two or three spices would you recommend to them, do you think? Well, the basic spice, which is uh, cumin, coriander, cardamom, cinnamon, mustards, uh, things like that, basic spices. And then you have there are spice blends uh, for many different reasons. Mm -hmm. So depending on which cuisine you're working with. Okay, so now I have kind of a fun question to ask you. What do you think are some spices that you have here, spice blends, that people at home may have never heard of? Uh, we have some spice blend like uh, gochujang, umami dust seasoning, pepperoncino, things like that. Yeah. Umami dust. I want to put that on everything that I make. That sounds incredible. I might have to pick some up for myself to bring home, you guys. Okay, I have one more question for you, and I'm very curious, and I'm sure everybody at home is too. What do you think one of the next big trends in spices will be, and spices that people want to cook with, and, and seasonings like that? Salt. It's a trend now. Uh, there are flavor salt, salt floricel from many different places and salt from all over the world. Uh, hundreds of hundreds of salts. Chili is also very popular nowadays and there are many new chilies are coming up. I agree with you. I think that that's like a really fun trend in cooking that, that people are, are going to be uh, seeing more and more of now too. So thank you so, so much for having us here today. Thank you for coming to Colossians. Yeah. It was such a pleasure meeting you and, and everyone at home. Make sure if you're in New York City that you stop by Calustian's to meet Aziz and to come check out this amazing selection. And now we're going to head back to the studio and I'm going to show you guys how to use spices to really up your cooking game at home. So now that we saw how many awesome spices and spice blends there are out there, I'm really excited to show you three fun ways to use one of my personal favorites. It's a spice blend called za'atar, and it originated in the Middle East, and here's traditionally what's included in this spice blend. We've got some dried thyme, some sesame seeds, and then this one you may not be familiar with. It's called sumac. It's got a pretty red color and a tart lemony flavor, and it's actually made from dried flowers. 
So that's the basic recipe for za'atar. But some variations include other spices or herbs, things like dried oregano or dried marjoram, sometimes some cumin or cumin seed, and sometimes some coriander. So sometimes people are a little hesitant to pick up a new spice or spice blend because they don't think they're ever gonna use it again after that one recipe or that one time. But I'm gonna show you three really easy ways to use za'atar. It has an excellent flexible flavor that goes with so many different dishes. It's like nutty and herbal. So if you're having a party, here's a really easy way to impress your guests. Just pick up your favorite dip at the supermarket, a hummus or a baba ganoush, even a Greek yogurt dip. Here I've got some beautiful hummus and veggies. And here's how you're going to spice it up easily with your za'atar. You just drizzle a little bit of olive oil on top, then add some exotic flair and a beautiful garnish with some of your za'atar. And that's it. Here's another really fun way to use your za'atar. It's delicious as a seasoning to put on top of popcorn. So just use whatever kind of popcorn you normally buy or you like, add it to a large bowl, and we'll drizzle it with some olive oil. You could use cooking spray or melted butter too, whatever you have on hand. And then just add some of your za'atar. It adds just delicious extra flavor and makes it a little bit more fun than your usual popcorn night. And now we're gonna make a snack mix and let's add some peanuts to it. You could do wasabi peas here. That would be delicious to give it a kick. And some mini pretzels. And just toss and serve. Now we're gonna make a really delicious flatbread pizza using your za'atar. Za'atar is actually used to season flatbread pretty traditionally in the Middle East, but we're gonna make a pizza out of it, so it's something you could serve uh, for dinner or at a party. You can use either pocketless pita that you pick up at your supermarket or pre-made pizza crust, whatever it is that you find. And the first step, we're gonna mix a little bit of olive oil in a bowl with za'atar. And what we're gonna do is use this to season our crust. If you want a crispier finish, you could put it on parchment first, like I did here on a cookie sheet, and just pop it in the oven for a few minutes to toast up. Now that we have our olive oil and our za'atar mixed together, we're just gonna brush it over the top. This is gonna add amazing flavor. You could even enjoy it just like this if you wanted, but we're gonna go with some really fun pizza toppings. I'm using some fresh mozzarella here because it melts and it's got such a delicious pull to it. You could use shredded mozzarella, you could use feta or goat cheese if you wanted to really give it some interesting flavors. And once that is done, we will just put it in the oven to melt the cheese a little bit and then I'll show you how to garnish it with some really bright, fresh flavors. So now that our cheese is all gooey and melted and delicious, we're gonna add some nice sliced grape tomatoes you could use regular tomatoes too, or cherry tomatoes, roasted peppers would be nice here. It just adds some bright, pretty color, and they actually taste really delicious with the za'atar as well. And then next, we're gonna garnish with some fresh herbs. I've got some parsley here, and I also have some fresh mint we'll put on the other one. You could stick with basil if you wanted more of an Italian edge, but these just taste really nice with like the Middle Eastern flavors and the za'atar. And that is it, it's ready to enjoy. So hopefully we've inspired you today to spice up your cooking a little bit with za'atar and other delicious spice blends. Thank you for watching and please make sure you subscribe to the Store Brands USA YouTube channel. See you next month.